In this video, I'm gonna be analyzing three potential Amazon FBA products for your pleasure. And then I'll be letting you know what I think about them and just generally giving some feedback. At the end of the video, I'm gonna be letting you know how you can get your hands on some completely free product research training to give you a little step up on your research journey. So if this sort of content sinks your anchor, floats your boat, then please subscribe, make sure your notifications turned on. Let's get into the video straight away. Welcome if you're new here, welcome back if you're not. My name is Johnny Bradley, I'm founder of the Seller Pro Academy where we help ordinary people create extraordinary things, just one product at a time. Now, today's video, today's video. Got my notes, okay? And uh, there's only a one page of notes today because I've been a bit lazy. And what I've done to prep this video is not very much, okay? I went onto Amazon earlier this morning. I spent about 20 minutes just looking around, trying to find some product ideas. And then once I found three, I stopped and I didn't actually start analyzing them. I made sure there was enough sales to be worthwhile, but I stopped analyzing at that them at that point so that I could do it live on the actual camera with you now to get my immediate feedback and yeah, just to get some you know nice content out to you guys. If you have been a subscriber, you'll know a few weeks ago, I uh, announced a giveaway where I was giving away a thousand pounds cash, access to Stellar Pro Academy. Big video, by the time of releasing this video, it might be gone, uh, but you know, at the very least you can wait until the end and get something for free anyway. On that video, I asked people to comment with what they were struggling with the most with their Amazon FBA journey. The biggest thing came up was product research. So do you know what? Let's crack through that right now. So I've decided to pick three very different products for very different reasons to give you an idea about what people mostly look for, what I'll be looking for, and if there's a Goldilocks zone, you know, in between. So if any point in this video that you like it, then there is a like button that you can actually uh, like. All right, so let's stick me in the, the bottom right hand corner. Here we are on my screen. So we're gonna go to the first one and to let you know about my method for finding these, I simply just went through the categories and started scrolling through you know, the best sellers and then clicking on some stuff, going clicking on something else and just getting ideas that way. It only took about 20 minutes to find these three ideas, okay? So the first one we came to is going to be a fridge organizer. And uh, let's just search and let's see what comes up. There might be a better keyword for this. Again, I haven't done keyword research. I haven't done any due diligence or, any, due diligence or anything like that. This is literally raw. This is what my opinion is. So the first thing I'm thinking is this is a like commodity-based item. This isn't something that you could probably add a lot of value to other than just bundling more um, in, your, in your bundle. So instead of having four, you might have six per per case. And that, that doesn't really interest me, particularly because of the sales price. So let's just go ahead and we'll ping up Go with Jungle Scout in this note. Let's go with Helium 10 in this case. Uh, look, so look, you've got some people doing some good revenue, 20,000, 10,000. Then you've got a lot of people doing some bad revenue. And the reason for this is the product price is very, very low. So for someone that's starting an FBA and you maybe have a thousand pounds or around that kind of mark, you might be looking at products like this that sell, um, you know, anywhere from 12 pounds or, you know, eight pounds 99 or, you know, along those lines. These are generally gonna be very cheap products, but the issue is that unless you're selling large number of units, it's really hard to actually scale. So these guys here, they're doing 3,000 units, 27, but they, no, they're selling at 899. So for me, this is gonna be a really hard product to stand out because this is already an existing niche. This has been around for quite a long time. There's people with tons of reviews, and although reviews isn't as important as they used to be, it's important for products like this because there's not that many areas you can really stand out. So scrolling down and having a little look, you know, most of these are, are pretty much the same. There's, there's really not much difference except for these ones. So I'm gonna click on these ones. They look like they're new to market. Uh, let's just see how they're a bit different. Uh, okay, I, I still haven't got to what these clips are. Right, so if this is you that's selling this, okay, um, Joe, Joe, uh, Joe, Joe, Joji's kitchen. Okay, the big mistake that you're making is that the most important feature of your product you don't get to until the fifth image. At this point, most people have clicked off of your listing. They're not going to get to this point, right? So what you want to do is on that first image, first of all, lay it out differently. That, that doesn't look very good. The second image should be showing how it's being used and how to use it. Because the, the reason people click on this listing is because they got this little, 
these little things right here. You need to show them that straight away and they're gonna be losing uh, a lot of sales because they're waiting until image five to be able to show that. You need to show the most important feature first. So generally speaking, you know, I, I don't think there's, a, there's that many areas that you can stand out. Really, this is about a volume game. It's about the economies of scale to get your, your unit cost as cheap as possible to undercut your competition. And eventually it's just gonna be a price war. So, so for many people, this might be like a starter product just to understand how Amazon FBA works, uh, you know, kind of learn by doing. But ultimately, it's not something that I think is ever gonna really be sustainable because of the price war to the bottom and you see people selling for eight pounds, you see people selling for 15 pounds when the products are very, very similar. That tells me that there's a price war going on, a pretty significant one, and I would personally stay away from it. The pros of this product is that it is actually very easy to start. It's got a low barrier to entry, and importantly, they are simple, simple products. There's not much to them, not much to go wrong. So in terms of creating marketing and you know having issues with it, it's not really gonna be a headache of a product, whereas maybe something that's electronic could be more of a headache. Let me uh, let me know if you like the new kind of dark vibes. I've got turning the lights off, getting the curtains down, getting a bit intimate. Let me know if you like that. So this was the first one I found. And the reason that I wanted to put this in the video is there will be a lot of people that are beginners that will find products very similar to this and they'll go ahead with them and get into this point where they're in a price war and they're really struggling to stand out. Their PPC isn't working very well because they're not able to really add value with branding and, and bundling and creating a really, um, you know, really good offer for the customer. So that's my opinion. Um, you know, you could say I'm wrong and I might be. The next one, okay, next one is essential oils. You know, I love an essential oil. You could say they are essential in my life. So when I saw these, I was like, do you know what? This is a good one. I'm gonna check these products out because they're small, they're light, they're reusable. They're not reusable. What I mean is replenishable. So I stumbled across these and I like them immediately. I use essential oils because again, they are essential. And I thought, you know what? This is gonna be a really good product. They're quite small, they're quite light, easy to manufacture. And yeah, potentially you could brand them really nicely. I was also thinking about the longevity of a product like this, because first of all, there's something that run out. People, customers want to buy more of them once they run out. So that's something that is always good to sell because you're always gonna have repeat customers. And the other thing is because of a product line. If you are selling these, it's most likely that you are or will be selling some sort of diffuser which have huge amounts of sales, just absolute ginormous amounts of sales. But the issue is there's not really a lot of high-end diffusers. And this is something that I've personally been looking for to buy myself. Like a lot of them you get are just like this, like very boring, you know, very standard. But when you look at a company like Neom, they have a, one that looks a little bit nicer, and obviously there's a premium for, for a brand like that. However, the technology inside is pretty much the same. If we look at how much these people are making, it's just barbaric. So we've got 210,000, 40,000, 85,000, 329,000, 291,000. Just bear in mind that these might be a little bit inflated. We're in Q4, Christmas tree behind me. So these are gonna be higher. They're a very giftable present. They won't be like this all year round, but they're very basic products. They, they don't really, there's not much to go wrong, but there is lacking a luxury version. That does not look good. Then there needs to be a luxury version of this product with like a kind of a, a gray or even a like a stainless steel enclosure or something like that, which is really high quality. And then you could probably charge 50, 60, 70 pounds for, for one of these diffusers and you know really dominate because you can spend a lot of money on advertising and, and stuff like that. But anyway, back to the essential oils. Uh, let's just ping up some of these numbers. So I'm looking on over here, and as you can see, we've got some big numbers, 100,000, 199,000 a month, 101,000, 87,000, 44,000, 30,000. So look, this is a high demand market. Again, of course, it's Christmas. These are really giftable items. They're not gonna be like this all year round. You would run some sort of um, trend check on this sort of stuff, but it's an ever-growing market, I believe. Health and wellness is always gonna be front of mind, especially over the past year and going forward. So this is definitely something that I would look into. Some of the concerns that I would have personally is around actually what's in those essential oils and how can you do your due diligence and validate that they are safe for use. One thing that I think is really important if you were to go into a product like this is the brand. Like these ones, they don't look very nice. They, they don't look very nice. They don't look very nice. You know, these ones look a little bit nicer. They're more kind of on trend with the, the actual color of their branding. You know, these ones are a little bit nicer. Um, again, these ones look quite, kind of quite cheap. There's definitely something you can do to make this look really high-end and high quality. For example, if we look at Neom, 
the difference is is massive. You know, they're, they're going for classic class. And ultimately, when you're putting these in your home and, you know, you want to relax and all that sort of stuff, you want the thing that you're using to be relaxing. You want it to kind of give off those vibes. So if it was me, I'd be looking at creating a brand with like pastel colors, making about health and wellness and really leaning into that side of things. And ultimately, if you have a diffuser and you have the essential oils combined, this is you know quite a big business. There is a lot of reviews. There is a lot, there's a lot of competition, but importantly, there is the potential for a gap in the market for a high-end luxury diffuser and luxury essential oils. Now, the last one I wanted to do, I wanted to find something that's a little bit more expensive for those that had, again, more money to invest. And very simply, just stumbled across ring lights. These will be quite popular at the moment just because a lot of people using Zoom and you know wanting to have good lighting and stuff like that. Lighting makes such a difference on any time you're using a computer to have a meeting. Just like right now, I have a big light right here and I've got no lights behind me. If I turn it off, I'm literally in the dark. So it's really important to have lighting. So this is a product that has gained a lot of momentum over the past few months, but I think this is gonna be a big one or products like this for the future, or even go down the branding route of, you know, having lights like this made specifically for web meetings, Zoom calls, Skype meetings, that sort of stuff. I think maybe there's gonna be a gap in the market there that hasn't quite been filled yet. If we look at all these, the other thing that I noticed straight away is that all of these images, unfortunately, are very, very, very similar. And it's, it's hard to actually see one that stands out until you see, um, a video ad and this is actually isn't the video ad I saw earlier today which is um, a little bit annoying because the video ad was really really good so I probably actually won't be able to find it this is a sort of product where you can actually run quite a lot of ads if you have a higher price point so I wouldn't be looking at the ones that are like $17.99 I'd be looking at the ones that are selling for £37 £35 £39 £65 you know luxury choice for example you know what makes a luxury version of this product and does it really cost that much more to make because again most people go for the cheap options sometimes it's a better thing to go for the more expensive option put more money into the branding and then you can spend more on advertising to actually beat the competition but let's look at the numbers on these because i know that's what you want to see again we've got a huge amount of revenue uh 62 000. these are sponsored we've got 93 000 164 000 60 000 4 000 220 000. you know these numbers are obviously huge and there's going to be a lot of uh, reviews with these as well but at the same time there's still going to be gaps in the market although they have a lot of sales although there's a lot of competition all of them are very 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 similar so if you start buying one of these if you work a job right now where you need to have that light for your webcam start using them and think okay what is going to be the best solution for this for this sort of person for the person that wants to have it on their desk when they're doing zoom calls on their phone or on their laptop how can you make a better solution for those people can you bundle it with some video training about how to get the best lighting how to get the best environment how to get the best background you know there's many things that you can do to try and carve out your own market so as you've seen with all of these three examples I'm not really massively going into the actual number of reviews because what we found at the Seller Pro Academy after doing this many many times and helping many people do it is actually that the reviews don't make as big as a difference as long as you put more focus into the branding and into the product offer if the offer is more desirable than your competitors and it looks like it's better value for money it's perceived as better value for money just because you've positioned it in that way normally you can command a higher price and you can beat your competition because you can spend more money on ads. And that's the really important key feature. And ultimately, any niche that you get into that has a lot of sales, at some point, even if it doesn't have a lot of competition now, at some point, it will. So you need to create your product and your product offering and understand that eventually there will be more competition. So you need to make sure that you're fighting that future competition today. Now look, if you want to get some absolutely free product research training, I've taken a couple modules out of my Full Seller Pro Academy and I've given a free seven day trial to those modules. So you can go through, you can watch them completely for free, no strings attached. The link is gonna be down in the description. The best way to thank me for that is simply by just leaving a little comment down below, letting me know what you thought about this video, subscribing with your notifications turned on and hitting that like button. You know, we wanna tell YouTube that it's a good video. If it's not a good video, hit the thumbs down button. But if it is a good video, if you've enjoyed it, thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment, all those sorts of things. That's it for today. Make sure you do claim your free seven day trial if you haven't already. And remember, you're just one product away. Bye-bye.